spooky friends and welcome to our little like wedding crafting corner today a little spooky a little halloween a little wedding a little crafty moment hi friends how are you doing today i hope you're having a lovely lovely day and are gearing up for spooky season and also maybe want to hear some wedding updates because oh i have wedding updates for you the wedding okay anyway so before we jump too far into the video, shall we pick our featured patron of the day? Our featured patron of the day is... Our featured patron is... Who do we have here? Alexander! Well, this doesn't seem fair at all. Doc. Again, I know they're perfect one. Honestly for you, Doc. Wedding invitations. You gotta be kidding me. Doc, thanks so much for being my best friend. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. Let's not dox myself. <laughs> Yikes, good start. Oh, uh, let's do a little rearranging. <laughs> That's better. Okay, the wedding. Do you want to hear about the wedding, the thing that you have been hearing about since B proposed to me in 2017? So if you're just here for like the paper, stuff for Halloween or fall wedding design ideas. We'll keep this short. I was supposed to get married on Halloween of last year, Halloween, October 31st, 2020. We were having big spooky energy. Very, very excited for my anniversary to be on Halloween. We've made some changes. <laughs> So our current plan is to get married this year, this October, a little wedding, a little party for our vaccinated family and friends. I was so bummed when we rescheduled our wedding, not because I was unwilling to wait a year, but because Halloween, the date, October 31st, not available this year. It was already booked for our venue. Tragedy, tragedy. But does the date really matter? It's Halloween to us, to me and you all the time. So it doesn't really matter. Our new wedding date is October 23rd, 2021, this year. And like, oh, very soon. <laughs> it's coming up, it's coming up. I'm so excited and it honestly has just been so like a long time coming. It's just been in the works for literal years. So I'm like just freaking ready. I'm ready to boogie to spooky scary skeleton. <laughs> And as you guys are very much a part of my life, I wanted to show you, we have generally just invites. Heckin' a lot of invites. <laughs> and I want to show them to you if you are interested in just seeing them as part of our life and part of our journey, or if you're here to get some inspiration for your own fall wedding, or just generally learn how to make an invite at all. Any season, it doesn't have to be spooky, although it should be, it should be. from the top shall we oh my gosh okay so this one here god this feels like ages ago <laughs> we took this picture in november of 2019 so this was our original save the date um on the front has a picture of me and b being a bunch of little cuties i'm wearing my um my, my candy corn shoes in there oh my god it feels like ages ago I will link the video where I got these shoes, these candy corn shoes. These candy corn shoes, oh my god, oh my god, I love them. You guys were with me when I got them. And like that outfit, that whole thing. I think in that video, oh my god, it's so long ago, I don't even really remember, but I think I was like, you know, I might wear this for my save the dates. I did. I did end up wearing it. I just loved it so much. So we have this cute little picture on the front and on the back. Oh, I just love how the back of this one looks so much. I carved a pumpkin for this that says October 31st. There's like a little spider dangling down from it. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. It's so cute. Which was going to be our wedding date, right? So I think I'll still have that pumpkin at our wedding. It's part of our story. It's part of the journey. It's like not the right date at all, but... <laughs> cute and I remember when I was designing the save the date I really kind of struggled with the um like legibility le le making sure it was legible making sure you could read the words on the back of the card because originally I didn't have this like wooded sort of background like a, the, the thing that the leaf is on which by the way that leaf is so cute 
so cute. I was trying to just type the words on top of the leaves and there was just so much happening. It was really, really hard to read, but I wanted it to work so bad <laughs> that I tried so many different like options, different variations of like font colors and shadows and outlines and all of that kind of stuff to make it legible on the leaves. But at the end of the day, I was like, there's way too much happening back there. I need something that's like easy enough to read that like my grandparents can read it, you know? Like, like I don't want my grandma to have to be like, what does this say? You know, I, I, I just, it needs to be legible. It's like one of the most important things about designing any invitations or really anything that has words on it. You gotta be able to read them. So eventually I was like, all right, I've gotta put something over these leaves. You can't read it. <laughs> I ended up finding a picture of wood and the wood that uh, I did end up using was not this shade at all. It didn't really match, but I liked the wood grain in, in the image. So I threw it in there and did a bunch of color shifting around until it fits the palette of the invitation. It's one of those things that's like kind of hard to imagine at first. You have to be like, okay, we're, I, I'm imagining it and skipping a few steps in my head from where we are now to where I want this to be. And is this, is it gonna work? It's one of those things that like, you just have to trust the process. You have to have a have a have an idea of going into it because the steps along the way, when I put it in this wood and it was like, uh, I think it was like a grayish color at first, it did not look right at all, but trust the process do some shifts, make your palette look all like cohesive. And now it's adorable. I can't even imagine, uh, uh, magic? <laughs> I can't even imagine it without that wood panel there now. It's so cute and it totally fits like the, the autumn vibe. It looks like a, like a little cabin or like a signpost in the woods, like you're out hiking and the leaf oh my god this is such a cute save the date heck i haven't seen it in so long i kind of forgot what it was like i love this i love it oh my god it's so cute but it doesn't matter because we're not getting married on that day instead we have a save the date again part two we had to make the decision to reschedule to postpone our wedding uh, which we did around like summer of last year. We kind of could tell that there was no hope of that happening uh, by Halloween. So so we needed a way to like alert our guests that the wedding was not happening at the time we told them it was happening. So I grabbed another photo from the, the photo set for our first save the date and wrote save the date again. <laughs> this one was pretty easy to make because we already had the photos from the first one. I already had our little save the date uh, design and I wanted it to match and kind of go along with uh, the first one. So it's all the kind of the same graphics and stuff. And then there's a note on the back that says, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have decided to reschedule our Halloween wedding to October 23rd, 2021. As much as we want to see you all this Halloween, the health and safety of our loved ones will always be our top priority. Still true. Uh, thank you for understanding and we will see you and your costume next year. We'll get there. Um, and then my favorite part of this second save the date is how, how we have signed it. Okay, so I'll tell you real quick how I did this little cutie here. I think it's really nice. It gives it a much more personal touch than just like all typey typey. I had him sign a piece of paper, like his signature on a piece of paper, um, in like a Sharpie or something, something bold enough that it was easy to transfer it into an image file. And I drew this little pumpkin in the and sign. Honestly, I just pulled that signature from my logo because that's my, that's my signature. So got a little lazy on that one. <laughs> and then I took that paper, I scanned it into my computer and then just do like a heckin lasso in Photoshop, grab that, take it on over to the save the date, use a little magic wand boop that background out of there and then i just use the color overlay checkbox check that setting thing and then you can just swap out all of the colors until you find something that you are happy with i did a mix of the bright orange kind of color for our signatures and yellow for the pumpkin and the and sign and then i think i probably did a drop shadow on that as well just to separate it from the background a little bit and that is all it took it to bring and my favorite part of the second day of the date are little signatures down here and signing it with a pumpkin instead of a heart oh my god the cutest Okay. okay. Now, on to the new things. You guys may have seen those others already because those are old, old. They're old. But now we're on to the brand new things that I have literally 
just designed, just printed, just packed up. I have not even mailed them yet. I have them here. And uh, as I was packing these, I was like, you know what? My friends on YouTube might want to see these before I send them off. So these are in progress. They're happening now. So these like packed invitations, the actual, the ones we are sending out have have two to three printed materials inside of them. We have the actual wedding invitation itself, the big boy here. And then we have our costume party invitation. We'll talk about that. We're still pretending it's Halloween. Just go with it, okay? It's fine. And we also have our rehearsal dinner, which is just our uh, wedding party and our immediate family. And oh my God, I just got these. I just got them printed. And you know, it's so like nerve wracking uh, when you're designing something online because you don't like, you can hope and dream all you want, but you don't really know how they are going to look when they are printed, unless you're like a super pro expert at this. But like, I would say like the average person probably is just sort of like hoping it works out. <laughs> That's how I was anyway. I designed all of these in Photoshop and I wanted to make sure that they were like a really cohesive look together. Like if you're getting all three of these, I wanted them all to look beautiful together. When you open up your invitation, you pull them all out, they're like a unit. But I didn't want them all to be the same. So we had a little design fun on these. I can't wait to show you, I'm so excited. <laughs> Okay, so I guess basically I'll show you all of these up close and then kind of talk you through how I made them or how I designed them. So the first, uh, because we have a lot going on on our wedding weekend, basically, okay, so we get there, <laughs> fade from black. We get there, out to our venue, we're pretending it's Halloween. It's Halloween, it's Halloween. So we're getting there, we're doing our rehearsal. Uh, our wedding is on a Saturday, so we're doing our rehearsal on the Friday, and then we have our rehearsal dinner. Uh, honestly, this one is probably the least favorite of my cards, just because it's the, the least, like, zazzy. It's the least exciting, which is fair. I did spend the least amount of time on it, because I was really in a hurry. And I was like, you know what? It's not really going to that many people. So this is what we have if I'm honest. It's super straightforward. It just says, hey, we're having a rehearsal dinner. Here's where it is, and the time to be there, so uh, RSVP, please. Uh, that's about it. For the background of this one, I pulled a stock photo. Oh, okay, I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, when we get to the invitation, but I pulled a stock photo of these leaves that were pretty like autumn-y. It was pretty fall-y. I ended up lightening it a whole bunch. I first did it with like a white, like I turned the opacity way down and had a white layer under it, but it wasn't quite um, muting it the way that I wanted it to. So what I ended up doing after I did some like level curves on the original photo, I dropped just a pink layer. <laughs> just solid pink over the top of it and then turned that opacity down until it got to a place where you could see the leaves. There's a little bit of like interest in the background, but it's still easy to read the information that is important to like convey. Because when I first pulled this image, it was super contrasty and anything that I put on top of it was very hard to read and it was very distracting. And I think this is a nice, just like subtle background that gives a little bit of like texture. It gives a kind of a fall feel. It, it sort of just like rounds out with the other two. And the back of this card is the same picture of the leaves, but it has a Gaussian blur filter applied over it. So it's not as like crispy sharpie as the one on the front. Cause it's like, hey, this is the back. Turn it over, flip it over. Now the fun, the fun fun. I love this one. I love this one so much. This is like, these two are like my little pride and joy. Uh, they just turned out so perfectly me. They are like, the the idea, the vision I had for them was like totally came to fruition. It's like exactly what I wanted. They each give off a different vibe and the vibes are the vibes I wanted. I love them. And when they when they arrived and they were, were printed, the colors were exactly what I had pictured. I was just so freaking happy. <laughs> Which, by the way, um, I ordered these. This is completely, like, not sponsored. I don't know these guys. This is unaffiliated in every possible way. I just want to give you guys the full scoop on, like, how I, how I did these, how I made them, where I got them, all that kind of... Stuff. I got my invitations printed through Vistaprint. Very easy to use and they always have like hella sales 
always. I've used them to print things like business cards and stuff way back in the day for years and years and there's always been a sale every every time I've been to their websites. And I've been very pleased with the quality of all of the everything that I've ordered from there over the years. Yeah, basically the way that I ordered these, I ordered them as postcards, I believe, and then I took my design and did like the upload your own design thing, which also, okay, another sidebar. I'm sorry, tangents, tangents, tangents over here. If you need invitations for something like this, you do not have to go about as like extreme as like tweaking stock photos to be your color palette and make all of this design in Photoshop and all these different like elements and balance and all of the different fonts and all of that. It's only if you enjoy doing that kind of thing. A lot of people, it's not their thing. They don't like to do it and that's fine. There are a ton of websites that have pre-made templates for invitations, especially wedding invitations. They're everywhere. So you can just go and grab one of those templates and type the info in like, here's my name, here's my partner's name, here's our date, generate, and then it's like, beautiful invitation, done -zo. That's an option. That's just not what I did because I love doing this kind of thing, but that is a perfectly good way to do it as well. And they will look beautiful, be beautiful. <laughs> but what I did is the upload your own custom design or something. I can't remember. Is that Animal Crossing or is that, <laughs> is that Vista Front? I can't remember what it's called, but I think it's like upload your own design, something like that. I would recommend before you even start designing at all, deciding what size you want to order them. I knew I wanted the wedding invitations to be a five by sevens, the nice, like, this is the event. This is the main event <laughs> invitation is five by seven. And then the costume party, which is an additional event because we love Halloween, uh, to be a four by six. That's this is the size difference of those two. If you are unsure what they look like when they are printed, it looks like this. So it's helpful to know what size you want to get before you start your design because you're going to want to leave room along the margins as like a, like a printing buffer kind of. They'll have a, a line that is the safe zone so that you don't accidentally cut off a word during printing basically. If you know the dimensions of what you want to order, you can make your design the exact right size it needs to be including the margins. I messed that up big time on my very first one, but you learn as you go. Hopefully, hopefully you don't have to learn as you go because I'm telling you now. Basically, it, all, all I have to say, it is very, very helpful to consider your margins when creating your design so that you don't have to scoot everything around later to make sure that everything important is inside the safe zone. Hopefully that made sense. You know what I mean, right? So I uploaded my front design into the Vistaprint uploader thing and it's like, looks great. And I'm like, thanks. I know, right? I love it. And then you can um, flip over and upload an image to go onto the back of the postcard. I believe, I'm just going off the top of my head here and you guys will be able to see, but I'm pretty sure it's free to just have it blank. There's an option to have a black and white image on the back for like a small upcharge and then there is an option to have full color on the back. I feel like for me it was something like seven dollars or something to do a hundred full color prints on the back. Something like that. Now of course it totally depends on what your budget is like or what your priorities are for your invitations but for me I feel like just having the full color back was like it just feels it feels so it feels so nice. It feels so good. It feels so complete. It feels so fancy and like professional. I love it. Ooh, personally, I love how it looks. So I did the end up designing like backplates for each of the, like for the wedding invitation. It has like a marbled back with a little pumpkin. <laughs> a little pumpkin that has our wedding date on it. The back of the costume party has a spooky ooky. Oh my gosh, I haven't even showed you guys the front of these yet. Oh well, whatever. Uh, <laughs> The back of the, the the costume party one has a spooky ooky little haunted tree. And then, oh my god, it says ours would be on our wedding website and then it has a link to our wedding website. Oh, <laughs> when I was typing this, I was like, is this a good time to like type like a serial killer? Like, I think it would be cool. It's looking a little clean if I type this uh, without like, with it all being the same height. I don't know, I'm really getting big serial killer energy on, on this, this sentence. And the font, it just begs to be typed like this. I, I'm sure people are gonna hate this, but I love it. I think it's so like, <laughs> oh, it suits the camp of this invitation so much. All right, I need to focus. Let, speaking of the camp of this invitation, let's flip it over. 
and take a look at the front. How's this for a video composition? I can't decide if this one is my favorite or the wedding invitation itself. I love the costume party invite. Basically, so what we're doing is the night before the wedding, because it was supposed to be Halloween, you know, you get it. Uh, we, we didn't want people to wear costumes at the wedding, but we wanted to have a costume party because we freaking love Halloween. So we were like, okay, you know, if people come into town early for the wedding, let's throw them a costume party. Let's have like a bonfire. Everybody wears their favorite costume. And it's a, it's sort of like a welcome party, I guess, for like the wedding weekend, but it's a costume party and you have to wear a costume where you can't come to my party. <laughs> I feel like this is the one weekend that like I can force all of my interests on everyone I know and love and care about. I'm gonna be like, you know what? You don't like costumes? Too bad, it's my wedding. This, this is the things I choose to bridezilla about is like, <laughs> how spooky is your costume? <laughs> now if it's like things that matter, I'm like, mm, don't, don't really care. But when it comes to the costumes, <laughs> you must, you must. So yeah these two are very different events the wedding is going to be like what's a good word i wanted it to be halloweeny and folly but i wanted it to be like fancy i guess but like you know like a, like i wanted it to have that like sort of magical classic like i still wanted it to be like fancy and pretty like i wanted it to be really pretty pretty Halloween is what I wanted for the wedding and I wanted it to be all of my colors the colors that like speak to me which is this very warm pink like peachy orangey champagne golds like that kind of color palette you know what I'm saying you're picking up what I'm putting down and I wanted that to come through in our invitations and I think it does so the vibe for the wedding pinky orangey beautiful fancy but slightly spooky pastelly very like elegant elegant that's a word i wanted there we go <laughs> elegant halloween but we freaking love the goofy silly campy like super over the top spirit of halloween we live for that so that is the costume party we're talking skeletons we're talking eyeballs and jars we're talking witches brooms and brews oh, oh oh and like horror movie soundtrack picture that in your head the the like classic favorite horror movie theme songs i so wish i could play them here for you now but you know that's not happening on youtube we cannot do that maybe after the wedding i could share the playlist with you guys it's Oh, if you love horror movies, if you love spooky things, if you love campy Halloween, it's, it's gonna get you so excited. It gets me so excited. As I was designing all of these invitations, I just kept looping that playlist because I was like, oh my god, this gets me in the spirit of Halloween. Freaking love it, man. <laughs> so excited. So excited. So, spooky ambiance, creepy, but not too creepy, just campy, really. A little graveyard tombstones little hands sticking out kind of like the invitation oh yeah invitation sorry i just got a little sidetracked thinking about how much fun this party is gonna be it's gonna be so epic <laughs> and then all of the guests are in halloween costumes <sighs> so excited <laughs> oh i just get so jazzed talking about this love it i love it so for the costume party i wanted to bring that campy sort of silliness to the invitation but I knew it was going to be bundled with the wedding invitation. That is like our elegant Halloween and I didn't want it to like fully clash because these are going to be bundled in here Ugh, together. So thus the challenge began of merging these two worlds. These two events that have totally different vibes, different energy together into one. The big elements of these two invitations are, are the graphics, right? Like the the skull with the pumpkins down here and there's flying eyeballs on there don't know if you noticed that the flying eyeballs on my wedding invitation be cool and the the general uh art of this 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 whole entire graphic this is all one kind of piece i guess these are both stock photos that you can buy online I cannot remember where i got these from because i originally started designing these invitations 
last year for our last year wedding and honestly it's just been a really long time since I started these so I don't remember the exact website where you can buy these stock photos but I will link it if uh, if I can find it again now the move if you only need like a couple of stock photos for something that you are designing and it's kind of a one-off thing like a wedding invitation and you're not planning to be doing this forever all the time and buying stock images or like a membership to a stock website is expensive when I first downloaded these it might be different now because that was like a year and a half ago maybe when I did it you could sign up for a free trial that allowed you a certain number of downloads so basically I had kind of scoped out I had sort of scoped out what was out there and like let my little brain wheels spin and kind of pre come up with like a loose design idea right before I signed up for the free trial before I started any of the free downloads so that I did not waste any downloads I saw this guy and I was like I love it that's gonna be one of my downloads for sure for sure for sure but then actually now that I'm looking at it and recalling this like process these little pumpkins and the bat and like same with the one on the back these pumpkins here are from a pack like a stock pack that had all of those in them as one download. So if you sort of like budget your downloads during a free trial period, you can get them for free. <laughs> That's what I did anyway. And I will go ahead and discourage you from just like saving anything that you find online, like some random person's artwork that you found online. That is discouraged. Don't steal art. So once I kind of mapped these invitations out in my mind, like I had a, a vision, a vision, and I found these stock photos. The stock photos were not in any type of shape for these invitations that were in my mind, right? They were, they were like, they were in the, the realm. They were on the right track. I could see how they would be like the, the puzzle piece for my invitations. If I could just tweak them a little bit. So that's what I did. Hi, just a side note from editing Alexa here. Um, before you go wild, editing and recoloring and all of that good stuff there are rules to when you can and cannot do this based on the images so if you want to check like how the images are tagged before you get in there that's probably a good idea i'm not really sure what the rules are for each stock photo website but here are the rules from the site that i used shutterstock here's the rules read once i got the downloads from the stock photo website i just got in there and started switching all of the colors around and shifting things to make it fit into my palette like this costume party graphic oh my goodness this was a completely different photo there's no way it would have gone with our elegant like pinky orangey wedding invitation just straight off the website just download it straight but you get in there and you recolor everything and it was it was tedious because it's like a zillion layers of stuff but when you do it like that you can just customize it so so much and everything on this card is in my palette I can make sure that it matches and goes with this one and it's full of like oranges and some yellows and even some browns in there like it's so pretty and this is like the the my color palette zombie of my dreams I love it oh my god it I just makes me it's like so stoked it, it it looks so good and it's campy as campy as heck as freaking zombie in my wedding invitations stoked <laughs> But after recoloring it and customizing it and making it my own, it also just ties in and it matches and it goes so well with my wedding invitation. I'm so excited. I recolored them both in Illustrator, I think. It's a long time ago. <laughs> when you download from a stock photo website, sometimes it will give you uh, options of file types. So sometimes you can get them as Photoshop files, you can get them as Illustrator files. Um, sometimes they're just JPEGs. So that's another thing to look for when you are, especially if you're trying to budget like a free trial situation. I believe that the two that I got for these, I think were in Illustrator files, which really lets you go in all of the layers and just customize customize the heck out of them so nice oh it's so nice but if you don't have illustrator or you don't know how to use illustrator first of all youtube has great resources to learn new things so don't be afraid you can do it i believe in you just watch some tutorials and play around in there you got it there's free trials also of illustrator you got it so yeah the the costume party is this like super cool zombie holding up a sign uh that has that says come early i imagine it being like a very spooky voice like and then the invitation says please join us i'm imagining like trumpets on like a disney red carpet 
do, 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 do. please join us for the wedding of B and Alexa Belletti. And then it has our date and like our venue, our location, and, and just visit our wedding website for more info, which I found so helpful to be able to just pack info on a website rather than trying to fit it all on the invitation. We put a password on our website, so we have that printed on our invitation as well, what the password is so that like, you know, grandma can get in. I didn't realize I had so much to say about my invitations. I just love them. <laughs> Okay, and then I do want to briefly talk about how I'm packing them as well in case that is something that is interesting to you. So for our envelopes, we I just got these on Amazon. I have the smaller ones that we use for our save the dates with the same ones and then these are the 5 by 7 ones on Amazon. They are just like a cream colored sort of weighted envelope and the inside is like this shiny gold lining it's it's like a fancy envelope this is a wedding envelope you know <laughs> this is not we're not paying bills in this envelope uh but they're really actually very very affordable i think it was like 11 dollars or something for 50 i don't know if that's right something like that I ordered two packs got 100 for like 20 bucks and i love the gold I love the gold. Uh, it just like goes so beautifully with our invitations. Gold is like part of our palette. So it like just fits. It just fits. Mm. <laughs> the things I get excited about, I'm like, ooh, the lighting of our envelopes. I love that. <laughs> this envelope, okay, pros and cons of these envelopes. Because of the gold lining, you can see where that lining ends. It has kind of a ridge on, on the front of the envelope which I could see really bothering some people. It personally doesn't bother me, so like I'm fine with it, but that ridge though from the lining, if that would bother you, these are not the envelopes for you. I like these envelopes. I feel like they're a good value for the money. They are, they feel nice. I love the gold lining. You're not gonna like see this in your mailbox and think you have a bill. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's I guess my main goal is I want people to be like, oh, what's this? Oh, wedding invitation. We're going to Alexa's costume party. Okay, like that's what I want. And I feel like these deliver that. So when I have been packing these, oh my God, this it's probably so horrifically boring for you, but I am so jazzed. <laughs> so when I am packing these invitations, I am, if, if someone is coming to all three of the events, most of them are just the, uh, the wedding invitation and the bonfire. I actually have no idea. I think that there is like some sort of like guidelines or some, I feel like deep in my brain, there's like a way that you're supposed to pack envelopes, like something facing one direction versus the other. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just packing them how I want them. I'm not so much for like caring about like traditional things. Like there, there's an order that you're supposed to put the names of like couples. Like if like grandpa or grandma comes first on the, on the invitation, do not care even remotely. <laughs> I don't know the way to do it. So I'm just doing it the way that I want to. And the way that I want to is by putting the wedding invitation in first, the big boy, and then I'm just dropping the costume party on top of that. It looks so nice. You can tell there's two separate things in there when you open it, which is good. And then also if someone is going to the rehearsal dinner as well, I'm putting them in the, in the order of the event. So the, the rehearsal dinner first, and then the costume party, and then the wedding. And now, this is another thing, I don't know if it's gonna work, I'm just doing it because I like it. I don't know if it will still be like this when they get to their destinations, but I've been kind of staggering them like this as well. Because the colors are just so pretty together, and it shows that there's three separate things in here, and, 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 I love how the celebrate with us just peeks over the top. Oh my god, it's so cute. That was not planned, it just is kind of a coincidence, but adorable, adorable. And let's talk about how I am addressing my envelopes. Oh my God, I thought this video was gonna be like four minutes long, talking about my invitations, but details. And this girl she just never stops talking. Once she starts talking, she never stops. So here we are, addressing the envelopes. <laughs> Chapter five. So originally I had planned to hand write all of the invitations, the names, the addresses, all of that. I did that for the first two times. I did that twice already because we had our save the dates and then we had another round of save the dates and frankly it just takes freaking forever. It takes so long. I'm a very slow, I'm very slow at writing things and like I am also just like compulsively checking the address to be like okay 107 this road and then I'd be like 107 what was it? 107. 107. This lane road. Road. Lane road. 
107 this road. And then checking my reference, 107 this road. Okay, perfect. All right, what's the zip code? And this is like, a, it's so slow. It took forever. <laughs> I was just so worried about like sending it to the wrong place. It takes freaking forever, man. And it, um, and I, because I was originally uh, like sort of learning how to do this like pretty writing for the wedding invitations last year, after we rescheduled the wedding, everything was just put on pause. We stopped working on decorations. We stopped everything because we were like, we got a whole year. We'll come back to this later. I also stopped practicing the, the, the fancy writing. I stopped working on getting better at that. And it's something that takes practice. It's hard to do. So when I, I sat back down to do these, I was like, Oh my God, I'm rusty. And I don't really feel like I have a lot of time to practice and learn this all over from scratch. And we're out of time. I have to mail these right now. <laughs> But I do think that the handwritten envelopes are more personal. They are nicer if you have time. If, if you're, oh, if you're like a calligrapher and you, you can do it quickly. I am so slow at it, you don't understand. <laughs> By all means, wonderful approach. I wish I had time to work on my handwriting to like quadruple check those addresses. If I had time, I probably would have done them. But it's crunch time, baby. We gotta hurry. <laughs> so what I ended up doing for addressing the envelopes this time around, I decided to just type out the addresses and print them on the envelopes, which I had never done before. I thought that that was gonna be way harder than it was, but it really wasn't that hard at all. I ended up using the same font as, oh my gosh, where is everything? All of these envelopes. Wait, where, where did they all go? Where's my invitation? Wait, no, no. <laughs> So what I did to customize my printed envelopes was I used the fonts from the um, from the invitation, tied it together with the contents of the envelope by repeating some fonts and also stamps and stickers. Mm. <laughs> Me of the 33 year old Valetti getting married and slapping stickers on the envelopes. It's, I like what I like, I'm sorry. I, I'm not sorry, I don't apologize. I like back stickers and shiny spooky cat stamps, so. Too bad. I'm sure there's a way to do like set custom envelope sizes and like word or something. I don't really, I, I'm a YouTuber. I don't know how to use Microsoft Word or Excel or any of those. <laughs> now Photoshop, that's my business. I can, I can do that. So I, the thing that was easiest for me, it's just whatever is easiest for you. If you are comfortable in Word, have at it. But Photoshop is the program that I am the most comfortable in. I can just zoom, zoom, zoom through it. So um, I just made like a little template in there that had the, the, the fancy font for the names and then the block font for the addresses. It took a little bit of trial and error printing them onto like directly onto an envelope and being like, oh, should probably scoot that to the right a little bit and maybe move it down. And then I would print it again and then be like, okay, 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 we got it. And then once you have it in the file that your, your template file, it's so much faster and easier to just tippity typey all of that in instead of, uh, you just copy and paste even. You don't even have to tippity typey. Boom, 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 boom. Copy, paste, copy, paste, addresses, type some names. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I did all of these in one day and it probably would have taken me like a week maybe to do these by hand, but I got them all printed, packed, stickered, stamped, ready to go in one day. So I recommend doing that <laughs> personally. It's so much easier for me. But if using the fonts that like are the same as the ones on the invitation, if that's not giving it enough like personality, if it's not feeling enough like you, just throw a bat sticker on there. And I tell you, it fixes everything. It gets, it gets the little Halloween heart punthy. Like you, you, a little spooky bat, you get that in your mailbox and you're like, this is Alexa. This is Alexa's way. <laughs> there is a bat sticker in my mailbox in August. Paletti. <laughs> and, oh my gosh, okay. Last thing. I swear it's the last thing. My stamps, you guys. Spooky silhouettes stamps from USPS. You can order these online. You can order um, just packs of them, however many you need and they mail them to you. They have Halloween cats, they have ghosty boys, they have spooders and purple bats. You guys, I love these. I have ordered them so many times and they are beautiful. Wait a minute, wait a minute. These are different. 
from the ones last year. Wait a minute. Wait, these ones don't look like they're hollow. They're just like spoiled. Last year, so this is the same designs as they are this year. Uh, but last year, these were holographic. Excuse me, the best stamps ever, ever, ever. This year, it's all the same designs, but I think they're just, they're like, they're like shiny instead of being hollow. Still cute, still cute. The hollow was amazing. Why did I take it away? I just noticed. No. Oh, well, these are still cute. They're still cute. I feel like the combination of printing the addresses and the fonts from the invitation, the bat sticker, and the Halloween stamp, boom, done. It is my wedding, and you're going to know it when you get this in the mail. <laughs> I'm so sorry for talking so long about stamps and color shifting stock photos. Wow, I have a lot to say about literally everything, don't I? All right, all right, all right. I think it is time for me to go drop these at the post office to mail these out to all of my family and my friends. These vaccinated cuties. You'll love to see it. <laughs> Let's get invitations in here. I'm going to go drop these off now. I hope you have a wonderful day and enjoy this little peek into my wedding planning process, I guess. Uh, maybe it gave you some ideas if you're also planning a Halloween or, or just fall themed wedding or anything. A birthday party. A birthday party for your cat. Anything. Anything that you might need invitations for. I hope this gave you some ideas or maybe uh, at least maybe one helpful tip to uh, make your designing, printing, assembling process easier that would be awesome uh if you liked this very very chatty wedding video i still have crafts to do i am behind in my wedding crafts a surprise i've had all these years to do it and i am behind so if you like um wedding content do let me know in the comments also like this video that would be helpful too if you'd like to see more wedding craft stuff it's kind of what's going on in my world right now. I would be happy to share that with you if that is something you would like to see. Ah, okay, yeah, so yay. I am gonna go to the post office. Doc, I love you. Thanks for being my best pal. And I hope you like this video and I hope you like this invitation when it lands in your mailbox, which has probably already happened before this video comes out. Love you, bud. Okay, I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching and hanging out. Hope you have a great day and I will see you next time. Bye, friends.